Rekha Rima. Welcome back as we talk about endangered species in Malaysia. So, what does endangered mean? An animal or a plant can become endangered when it's threatened by extinction. Species become endangered for two main reasons. Loss of habitat or loss of genetic variation. Extinction can happen naturally, with an animal facing die-out due to their sensitivity to environmental changes or being unable to survive against competition. Although natural forces can destroy or strain an animal population, human activities have caused a large number of plants and animals to become endangered. Human activities for economic development like agriculture, timber, mining, construction all impact the plant and animal diversity. IUCN, which is the International Union for Conservation of Nature, collects information about animals and plants in the red list of threatened species. You can go online and search the inventory using an animal or a plant's scientific name. For example, Manis javanica for the Sunda pangolin. You can google the scientific name for any plant or animal you can think of and search it on the IUCN website. The IUCN red list ranks animals based on criteria. For instance, the Bornean orangutan. It's categorized as critically endangered meaning the population is projected to decline by 80% in over 3 generations or 10 years. Its range will shrink down to 100 km square and the population size will consist of only 50 individuals. Let's explore some of the many endangered Malaysian plants and animals listed on the IUCN red list. The Belem tree is known as the Borneo ironwood and is a protected species here in Malaysia. This slow-growing tree can grow up to 50 meters tall. This is the same height of the towers on the Penang Bridge. The Berlin tree is logged in the wild for its valuable timber because it is a heavy hardwood, meaning it doesn't rot when exposed to water. It takes a long time to grow a Berlin tree, and growing it in logged over forests is limited because the supply of seeds and seedlings are not available. The Berlin tree is vulnerable on the red list. The Merbau tree is also vulnerable on the red list and was declared the National Tree of Malaysia last year. The Merbau is a semi-hardwood tree that can grow up to 50 meters and found in sandy areas of flood zones. The Merbau has an extensive root system and some roots grow above ground as buttresses to overcome windy conditions and flooding. The Merbau is termite resistant and is logged for its use in furniture making. So if you are in Kuala Lumpur, you can visit the Forest Research Institute of Malaysia in Kepong and walk right up to a mature Berlian or Merbau tree. Lowe's Pepheopidilum it's a beautiful orchid which is listed as an endangered species due to its limited growing area. The rare orchid is green, brown and purple. It grows on tall trees between lowland and low mountain areas. It clings onto mossy boulders or nooks filled with leaf litter. As it depends on larger trees, deforestation and trade push this orchid into decline. Now, let's look at some endangered animals. The Borneo pygmy elephant is the smallest elephant in the world and is 300 centimeters tall. It eats about 150 kilograms of plant material every day from over 180 plant species, including bamboo and grass. It is ranked endangered on the red list as they are threatened by forest clearing for agriculture and timber. As their roam range is reduced due to these human activities, they face another threat called human-animal conflict, where these elephants are seen as intruders to human space and unfortunately, in certain areas, they get poisoned or shot. The traditional natural habitat for the elephants are obviously the rainforest, but because of our activities, you know, we did timber extraction and then after that we convert this area into monoculture landscapes. Most of the time people claim the elephants come and attack their crops and because of that uh, people would retaliate by you know, either poisoning or uh, shooting the elephants. The river terrapin is a freshwater turtle and lays its eggs on sandy banks by the river or beach. They spend time in estuaries, mangroves, rivers and coastal lagoons. They are omnivores but mostly eat vegetation like mangrove fruits and river grass along with some fish and crustaceans. Ranked as critically endangered, river terrapins are threatened by poaching, sand mining, damming of rivers and agricultural runoffs. The dugong, also known as the sea cow, lives along our coastal waters, where meadows of seagrass, their main food source, is available. They can grow up to 400 centimeters long and weigh up to 400 kilograms and live in small herds. In peninsular Malaysia, dugongs are largely found in the southern states of Johor. They can also be found in the waters of Sabah and Sarawak. Ranked as vulnerable, dugongs are threatened by accidents by boats. 
land reclamation, marine pollution and extreme weather. The Malaysian tiger lives an isolated life quietly moving around in the thick jungles of peninsular Malaysia. It hunts wild boars and barking deer besides sun bears and young elephants by taking advantage of the thick undergrowth in the forest. The Malayan tiger is one of the smallest tiger species in the world and its population is shrinking at an alarming rate. Ranked critically endangered, the Malayan tiger is currently facing extinction due to poaching, forest fragmentation and canine distemper, a fatal disease that has recently been causing many deaths. Besides habitat loss and poaching, some of our Malaysian animals are under pressure by wildlife trade. The Department of Wildlife, known as Pahilitan, is the authority in clamping down on this activity. In the last year, many rangers, police and military exercises, as well as seizures, have been launched to curb poacher and wildlife traders. Starting from legendary folk stories and beliefs, animal parts have been used to make traditional medicine or show strength and status. Some of our Malaysian animals that are most traded include the helmeted hornbill for its cask, cardoat leopard for its skin, teeth and meat, the sun bear for its organs and paws, and the pangolin for its meat and scales. Today, the animal trade spans the globe and the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild, Fauna and Flora CITES aims to ensure the international trade in species of wild animals and plants does not threaten species survival. You are doing your part by learning about endangered animals and plants, while many adults who work in conservation, enforcement and education are actively championing the safety and protection of our Malaysian species. Learn more about our Malaysian animals, biodiversity and ecological services by following our Rakan Rimba online classroom. So now we've come to the part where we'll be drawing the second portion of our diorama. Today, we'll be drawing a monkey cup and a forest herbaceous plant. So grab your pencil and the papers you cut yesterday and join me in the next section. Okay, now we're gonna draw the monkey cup plant. So to start, I'm gonna draw five monkey cups to uh, create a focus of where the plants, the leaves all need to be. Okay, so the first monkey cup I'm gonna draw is down here. That's the mouth, and that's the body, and this is the cap of the monkey cup. So it doesn't look like much now. Hang on, let me keep going. The next monkey cup is going to be about here. So now that's the cap. The monkey cups have this vine that holds it out and it's usually attached to the tip of a leaf but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw another monkey cup here so you can't actually see the one that I was drawing just now okay and then this vine goes there Let's leave that there for a while. Let's finish this one first. Okay, so that's this one here. So usually they have lips here, so you can draw in the lips once you are happy with your monkey cup position. Now I'm gonna draw. See this guy here has a leaf that's gonna be here. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that leaf. Okay. Yeah, or maybe I'll make that leaf a little bit longer. that's better right now I'm gonna draw another monkey cup
feathers come out on this side. Okay, that's not so nice. Let's redo that. I want to have bigger leaves in the front. Okay, and another leaf here in the back. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five monkey cups there. <sighs> now I need to draw a leaf that goes this way. And then we fill on top here. Okay. Let's do one more here. Okay, so now do we have enough leaves or should we do one more? Let's do one more. Let's do one here. is going to be okay. Mm. Okay, do we have it all? Okay, I think that's it. So this is going to be one plan and this is going to be the second layer and uh, we're going to make another one which is going to be the first layer. Okay, for this one, we're going to do a, a whole plant which has a very thin um, stem. So I'm just going to sketch out what I think is going to be the main body of the plant, okay? And then we can erase some in between. Okay, so I'm going to do one big leaf over here, which 
should be coming from another thing here okay so if this it's gonna be my main I'm gonna do something about that This is going to be uh, facing downward, okay? So it's going to face downward. And so the veins will show that it's facing downward. Then it has a stem. And I'm going to put some... Like seeds. I'm going to make a stem here so that I can have the flowers. Maybe the buds, yeah. Okay, so we can come back and adjust it in a bit, yeah? I want to make a big leaf here. It's going to end up somewhere like there. So I'm just adjusting this shape as I go because I don't really have a feel of how I want to form it yet until I see it in contrast. So I kind of like that shape. So I want the veins again. Okay, so that's two leaves. And I feel like there should be another big leaf here coming up somewhere there. So that you know it's really close to us. I wanted to have a bit of an angle. Okay, I like the chip. So I'm gonna erase everything else and I'm gonna keep that. So this one has a vine coming out in the middle. A vein, sorry, a vein coming out in the middle. Okay, let's cut that back. Okay, so I like this, it's like right in front. This is like right in front. And then I want this branch here. Maybe that's too thick. My pencil's too thick. Huh? Okay. And then I want to make this part here, this part here, a, cent a focus point. So I'm going to draw a small leaf. There. In the same direction as this. I'm going to go one leaf on the opposite side. Okay, so... We, do we want to see the leaf or do we not want to see the leaf? Let's see the leaf, okay? Let's imagine that that leaf is in front of this big leaf. So let's erase that a bit. And let's carry this leaf here. And back. Okay, so it's... This leaf is in front, and then it's the sec this second one, that's the third one, so this one's right in the back. Okay, so if we did that, then our veins must come out right there. Okay, this guy here also has a vein. So usually the vein of the, say this is the leaf, the vein, the main vein, and then all the small veins link into that main vein. And that's because when water, the rainwater falls, it 
trickles down the branch onto the trunk, onto the roots. So that's why you see veins are always uh, giving you a sense of the direction of the plant. Okay, so one, two, let's do another one so that we can fill this space a little bit. Okay, so this one is this way. Yeah, so we've got three here. I want to adjust this guy a little bit. Yeah, okay, I think I'm okay for now. Now, this comes out on this side. I want to have a leaf here. Okay. And a leaf here. I want to have another leaf here. So this leaf is probably going to be a little bit weird looking because it's also a little bit hidden. Okay. So that one, this one, this one. And then now I think I shall take this one from the back. Let's make a cluster here. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is going to be a flower. Let's make the flower petals. Okay, let's make the petals fat in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes the flower petals do look very similar to the leaf but the idea is to always um, differentiate the way the veins form This stem needs a leaf, so let's put the leaf here since there's a gap. Okay, let's do a thinner leaf here. So keep going up, and then this one's branching out from here. So I think I should have another cluster here somewhere, okay, of leaves. Or a flower. Mm, let's do a flower. Don't forget the veins. Now we do leaves. So see, the bigger ones now feel closer to us, and then the smaller ones feel further from us. Okay, um, let's do more leaves. Okay, 
Okay. I think I'm gonna end this bit here with like a mm, let's just adjust this a little bit. plant that would be on the forest floor okay so we've got a cluster of berries there a young flower bud two flowers possibly flower buds there there you go all right so now we've got we've got two bits of plants and we've got our animals, right? So I'm gonna start cutting them. Remember on the third day, which is tomorrow, we will uh, assemble all the bits together. Bits off. 